So many spiritual teachers across the generations have taught about aloneness. Because of this, aloneness is a hot topic in the spiritual field, but most people have confused the idea of being alone in the world with being alone with oneself. And as a result, many of these teachings on aloneness are quite frankly doing more harm than good. You're going to hear things like, if you want to learn to be strong, learn to enjoy being alone. And aloneness simply means completeness. And oh, for those of you on the spiritual path, being alone, keeping a distance from people and becoming silent are not issues, they're opportunities. And with completeness, there is no need for companionship. And a being that is whole needs nothing and no one. And aloneness is your nature. You were born to be alone and you will die alone. <laughs> and you were living alone without understanding it, without being fully aware of it. And with awakening, you are sufficient unto yourself. Okay, you get the picture, right? As a biological species, people can only thrive when they have connection. This is a basic human need. It is true that a being can develop spiritually to the point where they fully perceive their connection with all things in existence, thus proving that loneliness is a perception. But people who perceive life this way do not perceive themselves to be alone because they experience no isolation. They experience no aching, no fearsome loneliness. The reality is that most people are not there, nor is it fair to expect them to be there. What most people need is the feeling that they are not alone in the world by developing a sense of togetherness and closeness and intimacy with other people and expanding their sense of connection and oneness from there. What I'm trying to say is to unneed this need of connection and closeness is rather abusive. And unfortunately, this is where most people take spiritual teachings on aloneness. Essentially, they think that to become spiritually developed and to awaken is to accept loneliness, to adapt to it, and to become okay with it, so as to become an island unto themselves. They're in the active practice of spiritually justified separation. This, by the way, is very, very different than someone who is in resistance to being alone because they cannot be with themselves. The fear of being alone in this respect has nothing to do with whether or not you have other people in your life to connect to. It's about how integrated you are with yourself. It's about those deep, unresolved pains that you carry with you and that you don't want to be with. It's about whether there is peace internally between your internal parts, right? It's about your self-concept. It's about your lack of self-love. It's about a poor relationship to your own capabilities and confidence. It's about whatever you associate with solitude. This type of resistance to aloneness is really a fear of being with yourself. And it is a resistance to isolation and the aching, fearful <laughs> kind of dynamic that goes with it, right? From a more objective perspective, a being that is so integrated that they have no problem being alone with themselves and who perceives the whole world as something that they are intimately connected to and part of is not a being that is separated, is not a being that is isolated. They're not alone and they are not lonely. This is true even if technically there's no people around them in a given moment. A person that is convinced that the reality is that they are and always will be separate and alone, therefore they must adapt to that, they do so by coming up with spiritual justifications for it being right to be alone. They do this so that they are fine to be alone. What I want you to understand is that this is a person who is separated. This is a person who is isolated. This is a person who is alone and lonely. They just don't perceive themselves to be because they found creative ways to cope with it. What we need to do is to take very, very, very extreme care, not to mistake the two. One is in alignment and the other is very much out of alignment. Unfortunately, people mistake these two all the time. A great many spiritual teachers, especially when they come from cultures where there's a trend of family enmeshment trauma, experience aloneness as freedom and as the only way to perceive a sense of self 
and to have a strong sense of personal truth. They feel it to be a relief from pressure and the other negative aspects of their social backgrounds. And so they come up with teachings which glorify aloneness, as well as teach that the ability to be alone is a virtue. So many more spiritual teachers have come from relational traumas that made them realize that they could only rely on themselves. This is a contrast to that enmeshment trauma, right? And so they connected to the spiritual realms rather than to other people. They then created a great many truths about self-sufficiency and independence and aloneness to justify and back up the adaptation they made in response to their own relational pain. By the way, if you wanna learn more about this, you can watch my video titled Spirituality, The Great Coping Mechanism. If you wanna be in alignment regarding aloneness, this is my suggestion. You wanna treat the state of being that is aloneness as a tool. We may call this tool solitude. Instead of thinking about it as a push away where you're pushing other people away, think of it as having a focused quality time with ourself. Use it as a tool to integrate. Use it as a tool to tap into and focus completely on your internal truth. Use it as a tool to become aware of and resolve any of that pain that you're carrying around with you. Use it to develop your sense of self-love. <sighs> Use it to develop a sense of confidence and capability and self-esteem. Use it to undo your negative association with solitude. At the very same time, realize that being with yourself or experiencing the state of solitude has literally nothing to do with whether you have incredibly close connection and other people to live with you in your life. Aloneness is a perception. There is not a moment that you're alone. You are connected to and part of all that is, and you are living in an interdependent universe, which means that no being is an island unto themselves. And just like water and air, connection with others is a basic need. What does it mean? It means if you love yourself, you're taking yourself as a part of yourself. You can't divide yourself from your best interests. So it means you're gonna seek out connection and closeness with other people because doing so is to act in your own best interests. Deep intimate closeness and connection with others is not an inherent contradiction to the experience of solitude. You may not be occupying the same space as another person in a given moment. And in that moment, retaining a perception of connectivity, it is in fact possible to not feel separated or isolated or lonely. Instead, it can be the opportunity for focus, intimacy, understanding, and a connection with yourself. Have a good week. If you liked this video, be sure to hit the like button, subscribe to my channel, and consider sharing this video with your friends. You can also click on the bell icon to be notified of the next time that I post a video. I want to thank you personally for the bravery that you have to step into awareness. I'll see you in the next video.